Howdy folks, Keith Bowen again, and this is Hard Rock University Classroom Edition. Um, we're going to have to do a little mathematics, it's fairly simple stuff, and it's really important if you want to be able to make money mining gold, you need to be able to do some simple math. I'll walk you through it, don't get intimidated. Now, we spent about three weeks, $450 waiting to get the assays back on 15 samples that we sent off from that uh, pilot scale processing we did of the sample from Gold Hollow. Now what is an assay? An assay is nothing more than a laboratory analysis of the precious metals content of a sample. It could be rock, could be a solution, could be concentrates, even a gold bar. So all it is is a, a quantity. It tells you how much is in it. Uh, one of the problems is there's several different methods of assaying. They all have their pluses and minuses. It's a bit ore dependent. Um, and none of them are entirely accurate every single time. Uh, there's another problem that you run into when analyzing ore samples that has absolutely nothing to do with the laboratory or the analysis. Even if the analysis is absolutely perfect every time, you're still going to have something called the nugget effect. Now the nugget effect is nothing more than the unavoidable variation in results you get because gold is in discrete particles of a finite size mixed through the rock inconsistently. Now <clears throat> if you were to take one ounce of gold and divide it into a thousand particles you'd have a bunch of particles about the size of the O in the United States of America on the back of a dime, about a millimeter or so. Okay. Now, if you were to take that and distribute it throughout a ton of ore, you'd think, well, you know, we're going to get good results. Well, guess what? The actual sample that they assay is only about 15 to 30 grams. I took 200 pounds. I crushed it. I split it to a couple of pounds. I send that to them. They pulverize that to like 200 mesh and then split it down to like 15 to 30 grams. So, it's a very, very small sample. If you had a ton of rock, and divided it into 30 gram samples, you wind up with about 30,000 samples. So if you have 1,000 particles of gold, 30,000 samples, this is the situation you wind up with. 29 samples will read zero, one will read 30 ounces per ton. And that's perfect. If you do your job perfectly, if the laboratory does their job perfectly, if that's the way the gold is distributed, uh, that's what you're going to get that will suck because 29 times out of 30 you're going to think you got nothing when actually you've got one ounce per to the ton which is pretty good. This is why placer is rarely ever assayed. It's almost always so of course these are the kind of results you're going to get or worse. So they take and they will process a pan full, a cubic yard, something to that effect to get an idea of how much gold is in it. They can't really do assays. Now our gold was assaying pretty consistently, uh, which indicates right away it's probably pretty darn fine. So uh, that's good in terms of getting good consistent results you can deal with. That's bad in terms of the finer the gold is, the harder it is to recover. So that's the nugget effect. Now let's get on to the samples themselves. This is a diagram of the gold hollow shaft. This is the surface up here, about a 35 foot shaft couple cross cuts at the bottom following the vein in each direction and a pile of debris from stuff sloughing off over time. Now up at the top the sample I was taking at the very end of the sample video ran 14.9 grams per ton. In the upper part of the shaft where I was first hanging around there it's 12.1 grams per ton. In the middle of the shaft, where you didn't see any video of me, it was running 26.4 grams per ton. And to get that 200 pound composite sample that I used, I took about 60% from this top and about 40% from this middle. If you do the calculations, it comes out to 19.5 grams per ton, which, considering the nugget effect, is very close agreement with 20 grams per ton. I'm very, very comfortable that this number is fairly accurate. Now, we use grams per ton because that's what the laboratory I use gives. It's becoming more and more the industry standard worldwide. 
especially in other countries where it's all metric, it's grams per metric ton or a thousand kilos and that works out to be parts per million. So that's the way they usually do it there. Now one ounce equals 31 grams. So basically up top it was about a half an ounce. Down here it's uh, about a third of an ounce. Down there about, you know, 0.85 or something like that. Okay. So these are interesting numbers normally. These are definitely, you know, there, there's good gold here, but it's only a six inch wide vein. So I'm not getting real excited about this, and I'll explain why in my next video, which goes through micro-mining economics. Now, to continue on to the actual test results from the pilot scale processing. Here are the numbers that apply to the uh, processing of the sample. This tells us how well the processing worked. Now, the processing depends on two things. One is mineral liberation, the other is extraction efficiency, and we're trying to test both at once. This does make things a little complicated. Mineral liberation is the, separate, the physical breaking away of the gold or other valuable mineral from the matrix, the rock that it's originally in. If you don't break it away, you can't physically separate it. So mineral liberation is critical. First you have to liberate it, then you can separate it. The extraction efficiency has to do with how well the table's uh, making that separation. Now this is a table that we're doing some experimenting on and such, and therefore we're trying to learn about it, and the extraction efficiencies are in many cases unknown at this present time. So that's why we're paying a lot of attention to that. Also, each ore is different, and uh, some you can tell your extraction efficiency by simply looking at indicator minerals, like your heavy minerals. At the Anhelita, it's a great proxy. If you got pyrites in your pan, you got gold in your pan. If there's no pyrites, there's no gold. End of story. Real simple. In this case, unfortunately, it's not quite so easy. So, this is the first time we ran it over the table. We ran it through the crusher, put it on the table, whatever was rejected from the input screen at 0 .030 inches, went back to the crusher, get ground. Everything was ground just enough to get it through that 0 .030 inch screen. So that's why it says one time. Now, the head ore is running 20 grams to a ton. We had 200 pound sample, which has two grams of gold in it. Now, how did I get that number? It's very simple. If you take the grade times the weight, you will get the amount of gold. In this case, the grade is in grams per ton, so the weight has to be in tons. Since we have pounds, you divide pounds by 2,000 to get you tons equals grams of gold. So just grade 200 times 20 divided by 2,000 gives you 2. Okay? use the exact same method on all these others. Now, these three tailing samples here, remember I said I hand pan it, I did not like what I was getting, so I was going to have to retable it. Well, I wanted to see what would have happened at this grind if the table had done its job right. So I took these tailing samples, hand panned them, and then assayed the light materials. That way I can get more information for fewer assays. It's very important. You don't want to grind too much because it's, it, it's a waste of money. If you don't grind enough, you waste gold. So it's always a balancing act. This is why I wanted to see at this grind what I would have gotten. So at this grind, I got 72.1 grams per ton in the concentrates. It's a little low for something to send to a smelter. Um, had 14.75 pounds for a total of a little over half a gram, 26% of the total. We recovered one half a gram of free gold. Sucked out the gold traps, hand panned it, weighed it, half a gram. Okay? Total recovery was only 51%. That sucks. Okay? <laughs> you don't want to throw away half your gold. This says you need to improve something here. Now, I already knew we needed to improve the uh, 
the recoveries because I could tell that. So I took all these tailings, except for the fine slimes, and reground them because, among other things, that's the easiest way to break them back up again once you dry them. They'll be all kind of clumped together. And I ran them through the crusher twice because I could. <laughs> And that's why it says three times here. Same head ore sample. Now we've added a couple of pounds to the concentrates for a total of 18.95. Got almost four pounds more concentrates. And it, you'll see the same head grade. That's because I composited these into one sample and therefore it's going to have the same number. They probably weren't identical, but I don't know what they were. I can't recover that information now. Comes out to 0.68 grams, 34% of the total. Not too bad. Not, not great. That's what you'd like to see more of. 0.6 grams, 30%. You know, if this was 34 and that was 55%, uh, you'd be much happier. Total recovery, 64%. We're doing better. That's definitely an improvement. But we still need, still want to get better than that. That's only two-thirds. You're still throwing away a third of your money. So, what do we need to do? Now, you will notice here on the grade, the coarse tailings is at 12, then it drops down to 9, then it comes back to 11, back up to 12 again. This I interpret as free gold that wasn't recovered, kind of floating, winding up, settling out in the slimes. Okay? So, these are finer. As, as each thing goes down, this is 0.014 inches to 0.03, or let me do uh, mesh sizes. This is about 60 to 30 to 60 mesh. This is about 60 to 90 mesh. This is 90 to 120 mesh. And this is about 120 mesh minus in there. So as it gets go down here, you get smaller and smaller particle sizes. Assuming your extraction was perfect, these numbers should constantly go down. The fact that they're coming back up again indicates we've got some float gold here that's winding up settling out later, but it's not getting caught by the table. You'll notice between here and here, the difference is 3.3 grams per ton where it's gone up. So I would say that's, that's a minimum of 3.3 grams per ton of float gold. That's quite a bit. That's about 15%. Here, between 6.75 and 8.25 is only 1.5 grams of float gold, or less than 10%. It's getting better. Uh, when I hand pan these tailings, there was almost nothing in terms of heavy minerals I could hand pan. Almost nothing. Like, you know, a quarter of a teaspoon. So, I'm very happy to say on these results here, the table is doing its job with the possible exception of some float gold. However, uh, oh and by the way, these numbers here with the lines underneath them, those are calculated. I don't know how much the weight is of the slimes because I didn't weigh it all. I know what the grade was here because I actually sent off a sample. Here the grade is inferred. I know where all the other gold is. Therefore, there must be this much gold. I know where all the other weight is. Therefore, there must be this much weight. That would give me that grade. As long as you have enough information, sometimes there's stuff you can calculate. But anyhow, it's getting much better here. Um, but I, even though the table's doing a great job, we're still getting way too much here. My guess is most of that is crystal lock. You just aren't beating it fine enough to get the gold away. And therefore, the next test to do is to grind it finer, and we'll pretty much have to use a different machine. Probably going to go to an impact mill and use air classification to get it down to, you know, 100 mesh minus, you know, 100% 100 mesh minus sort of thing, or, or very high percentage running 100 mesh minus, and see if I can bring these numbers up, uh, down, these recoveries up. I want to get it up around 80% or so at a minimum. Um, you know, you do what you can do. But with these grades, a six inch wide vein, those recoveries, we're not looking at profits and we're not doing this just for the fun. We're doing it for money here. So, that's my interpretation of this right now. 
number one, weren't getting good recoveries. The table itself seems to have a limitation factor in how much concentrates it can separate per hour. There's only so much it can actually recover. If you try and run it faster than that, some of it doesn't get recovered. So even though the feed rates were the same, this was getting a lot better recovery because it didn't have near as much heavies in it and it wasn't essentially plugging up the heavies recovery system. So that's what I see on the table end of the thing when it comes to the uh, mineral liberation. We need to grind it finer and see what happens. Now I did some other tests on the concentrates themselves and I'll give you those results in just a minute. Okay, so now this is the last bit of analysis that I'm going to do on this particular sample. Um, when you make a heavy mineral concentrate, it may or may not have a lot of your gold in it. If almost all the gold is in the heavy mineral concentrate and it's bound up, you pretty much have to do some additional processing or send it off to a refiner or something. You may have to leach it. Who knows? It all depends on the ore. On the other hand, you may have a lot of gold still, free gold, still entrained in it, or you may have some crystal lock where you just pulverize it well and you can get much of, most of it out. It depends. You don't know. So what I did with this concentrate was I screened it to three different sizes. Again, we're using screening as a proxy for grinding. So I screened it from 014 to 030, or basically 60 to 30 mesh, uh, 90 to 60 mesh, and 90 mesh minus. And then I hand panned it as a proxy for retabling it and panned off basically 90% of the lighter materials and assayed those. What we show here is it's pretty consistent. The finer material here could have free gold in it, the real microfine gold will go through the last screen, but not this one. The real microfine gold should have gone through that screen and I would expect to see a drop between this and that. I don't, so I kind of think these are pretty much all entrained gold. I don't know why the finer material is giving me higher numbers than the coarser materials, but hey, anything can happen. That's People forget. You don't tell the rock, you let the rock talk to you. Now, what we've got here is a, a proxy for retabling it, doing nothing else to it, and also checking to see what different grinds would do. Grinding to 90 mesh minus, I don't think it's going to do much good. It, it, it might if you go to 200 mesh or something, but you're really going to have to grind the bejesus out of it here. On the other hand, you can recover an additional amount of gold here. If you take the average of these pan fractions, you wind up with 55 and a half grams, subtract it from the 72.1 you start with, you get wind up with 16.6 grams per ton difference. That should be your free gold. You take the free gold divided by the total gold, gives you 23% of the concentrates, 23% of the 34% of the total gold in the sample that was in the concentrates, traits gives you 8% of the total. So if you retabled the cons even as they are, theoretically you could maybe jump your yield to 38% of the total entrained gold in the ore into your free gold. Now, this can be useful because if you have enough gold in your concentrates and it's easy enough to get, you can either recover it all, or virtually all, or you might recover half of it and still have something that a refinery would be happy to take. When you sell it to a refinery, you're going to get money back. That money is taxable. The free gold that you recover, if you don't sell it, it's not taxable until such time as you sell it. That can be very useful at times. So, you may want to put your free gold back into the concentrates if it's too low and that will trigger a, an acceptance on the refinery to it. Or you might want to try and get as much as you can out. If the refinery isn't going to accept it, if you can't find a refinery to accept it, you're pretty much going to have to do whatever you can to get it out of the concentrates. Now, that's basically the, the final question we've answered here. The, um, the, con the heavy mineral concentrates also look like they're going to need a lot of grinding to have any possibility of getting a lot more free gold out of them. 
So, we now have all the data we need to do a preliminary profitability analysis for this project. We know the width of the vein, we have an idea of the length of the vein, the depth of the vein, the grade of the vein, the recoveries. We can plug all those into a formula and come up with a good idea of the profitability. Quite frankly, just in my head on this one, it's not looking too good. Um, the next um, video is going to cover how to do that, but to get up to that point, let me, qual let me just reiterate everything. Number one, take big samples, as big as your circumstances allow. Crush and split off a sample for the laboratory. Take the remaining ore and do the proposed extraction technique on it, recovering all the fractions, weighing them, and assaying them. Now, if you don't, for example, have a diester table, and you were planning on using a diester table, then you might just take a smaller sample and hand pan it and use that as a proxy for a gravity separation of some other method. Uh, whatever you can do with a pan you should be able to do with machinery if you get the right machinery and set it up right. So if you don't have extraction equipment don't get all excited. Use panning. Good quality hand panning. Follow the techniques I've shown you and you can get a good idea what a gravity extraction is going to do in theory. So take all those numbers, plug them in to the formulas I'll give you in the next video, and then you'll have an idea of whether or not you're looking at a profitable project or not. And if it's not close and you can't figure out a way to make it close, walk away, find, spend your time finding a better one. That's, that's a lot better way to spend your time and money than beating your head against a brick wall. So, happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.